Hi everybody, hope you're all okay. Hope you are keeping safe and healthy um, and you're all doing well and hopefully still enjoying our book. Yesterday we got to the end of chapter 18 um, when the boys were, well, um, Bradley went home and he was talking to his animals in his bedroom, which at the moment we're not really sure if he's imagining them or what's going on. So I'm going to read 19 and 20 today. Um, it's only four pages. So I'm on page 70 now, chapter 19. Okay, so everything returned to normal. Bradley scribbled, cut up bits of paper and taped things together. He hated everyone and everyone hated him. And that was the way he liked it. He shuddered whenever he remembered that he actually had almost done his homework. He couldn't imagine anything more horrible than that. And he was glad Jeff wasn't his friend anymore. He realised he was better off without friends. In fact, he never was friends with Jeff. I was just pretending to be his friend. He decided he'd pretend to be anybody's friend. He'd never pretend to be anybody's friend again. Jeff was normal now too. That was what he told Carla. He walked to, the, to our office and announced, I don't need help anymore. I have eight friends now. We play basketball every recess and lunch and I'm the best player. Good for you, Jeff, said Carla. I'm very proud of you. How many friends have you made? He asked. I don't keep score, said Carla. I've made eight, said Jeff. I've always considered quality to be more important than quantity when it comes to friendship, said Carla. Eight, Jeff repeated, and I'm not friends with Bradley anymore either. I'm sorry to hear that. Why? I'm not. I hate him. In fact, he looked around the room. I gave him a black eye. He quickly glanced at Carla to see if he kn she knew he was lying and then looked away. What happened? Carla asked. Oh, you know, he wouldn't stop bothering me. I kept telling him to get lost, but he kept hanging around. I never liked him. No one does. Then he said to me, give me a dollar or I'll spit on you. Well, no one threatens me and gets away with it. I don't take that from nobody. So he tried to hit me, but I ducked and I punched his face in. I didn't want to do it, but I had no choice. That was a short version. Jeff had told the same story to eight of his new friends, but he usually made it much longer. So I don't think I need to see a counsellor anymore, he said, since I have eight friends. OK, Jeff, that's how you feel, said Carla. They might think I'm weird or something, he explained. Well, we can't have them thinking that. Does that mean I can go? Carla nodded. But any time you want to talk again, please feel free to come and see me, she smiled, even if you just feel like getting out of class for a while. He left, glad to be out of there. On his way back to class, he walked past the girls' bathroom. He stopped, shook his head and chuckled to himself. It seemed like it was such a long time ago when he accidentally went in there. I used to be such a jerk, he thought. He smiled a strange smile. He stretched his mouth so wide it was hard to tell whether it was a smile or a frown. Mm. That's a side of Jeff we've not really seen before. He's obviously not being very honest and he's taken um, getting lots of new friends to now kind of showing off and not telling the truth. Okay, a tiny little bit for, page for um, chapter 20. Colleen walked into Carla's office. I just came to tell you I can't talk to you, she said. Your parents didn't sign the form? No, and they won't either. You know what they said? They said it was a waste of money for the school to hire you. They said you should get married and have your own children before you start telling other parents how they should raise theirs. Carla shrugged. They said if I have any problems, I should talk to them. But when I try to talk to them, they don't listen, she sighed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Jeff has lots of other friends now besides Bradley. Eight, said Carla with a smile. So now I can invite Jeff to my birthday party without having to invite Bradley. I can invite one of Jeff's other friends. And he's nice. I couldn't invite Bradley even if I wanted to because Melinda is my best friend, except for Laurie, and she gave Bradley a black eye. Colleen quickly covered her mouth with her hand and then took it away slowly. That was supposed to be a secret, she said. Melinda doesn't want anybody to know. I never repeat anything anyone tells me, Carla assured her. Good, said Colleen. Melinda would kill me. Have you asked Jeff to your party yet? No, not yet, but I will. I know he likes me because he always says hello to me when I say hello to him, but then I always get so scared. I never know what to say next. I wish you could help me. Why did my parents say such bad things about you? They don't even know you. Your parents are just trying to do what's best for you, said Carla. A lot of people think counsellors don't belong in schools. She shrugged. 
I guess they're afraid I might fill your head with all kinds of crazy ideas. And that is the end of chapter 20. It's nice that there's some such short um, chapters in here because we haven't got to kind of read for much too long uh, a period of time. So yes, we're um, getting to know a different side of Jeff there, aren't we? Um, that I'm not too sure if he's obviously being very truthful, but he's not thinking about how his actions are going to um, affect other people. And then we've got um, Melinda, no, not Melinda, uh, Colleen going in and actually telling Carla the truth about Melinda punching Bradley. So I wonder if anything comes from that. So yeah, um, a little message just to say, enjoy your Easter weekend. I hope you have some nice family time, maybe an Easter egg hunt um, and lots of, um, lots of fun and quality time with your family. I will be back on Monday. Um, so have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you then. Bye bye.